Hi, welcome to Think Keto. If you found me here, then that means you're either eating low carb or ketogenic right now. We all know that the number one low carb rule, no bread. We all miss it, I know we all miss it. But what if I told you that I had a recipe that let you make your bread and eat it too? Well, stay tuned, because I'm gonna have lots of tips and tricks on how to do this, as well as all the nutritional information. Um, we got butter, beaten eggs, flaxseed meal, xanthan gum, hot water. Now, not boiling water. Um, if the water's too hot, it can, uh, one, curdle the eggs, and two, it can kill your yeast, which brings me to the active dry yeast that we have here. Um, we got pink Himalayan sea salt. I got some monk fruit over here to the side and then honey. Now, people I know have a problem with honey on keto, but the thing is that you need that little bit of sugar for the yeast. Um, it's just a teaspoon for the whole loaf of bread, so it's not like you're gonna be getting a lot of sugar. So go with it, you need it, okay? Uh, to start this off, we got the hot water. Just put it straight into the bottom of the bread pan. After that comes the lightly beaten eggs. We'll pour in this sifted oat fiber and about a wheat gluten. Just careful not to make a mess on yourselves here. Oh, should just powder up. All right. We got the flaxseed meal. I buy it as a meal. If you want to get a hole and grind it yourself, I'm just a little bit too lazy for that. All right, and then we got the salt. It was one teaspoon of salt. Now the salt, I like to put it around the edges because I'm going to put the yeast in the middle. All right, same thing for the butter. We got the butter. Um, I've had this softening up for about two, maybe three hours now. I cut up in small chunks and you put this around the edges. All right, last little bit. All right. Who knew softened butter was so sticky? All right. And then I use monk fruit. You can use whatever sweetener you like. Um, I've done this also with a stevia blend that I have, the powder one, after this, and don't forget this. I think it was two loaves ago, I forgot to put the sweetener in, and my family noticed it immediately. So don't forget this step. Um, I only put usually between two or three tablespoons in. Um, you can put as much as five if you like it a little sweeter. Um, note, this goes around the edges as well. Don't want to put it in the center. All right, we'll do three today. All around the edges. All right, and the last one is the xanthan gum. It's half a teaspoon of this. Doesn't take a whole lot. That's about it. You just dust it all over. Spread it out good. You don't want it clumped up. All right, now for the more um, controversial aspect, the honey. Just one teaspoon. Just like that. Just go drizzle this around the outside edges as well. We're making artwork in here, guys. It's gonna be the prettiest pan ever. All right, there we go. And then what I do is I take the back of my tablespoon and you make a little indent here. Do not go as far down as the water level. You don't want to hit the wet ingredients. All right, so you're just going to go down to get a nice little well. And then if you've got the packets of active dry yeast, just use a packet. Otherwise, if you're like me and you make a lot of bread, use one tablespoon right in the middle here. Now, come on, seriously, how incredibly easy is that? All right, so this is my bread maker. Uh, I got it off of Amazon. It was on sale for like $55. I'm not one to buy the most expensive or fancy equipment. I got what I knew I could make the bread I need to make with, and that's about it. Um, what you need to do, you can use any bread maker for this, but what's important to note is it needs to have that gluten-free setting on there. Um, some reason, I accidentally cooked it on the regular basic setting one time and I got a lump of what my husband called brain bread. It was just a squiggly looking ball of mess. So don't do that. All right, so easy as this is, you just slip it in. 
like so. Locks in place. All right, now for this particular model, you just hit cycle twice. Um, I leave the crust at medium and the loaf size at two pounds. It hasn't done me wrong yet when I do it that way. And then you hit start. You notice the timer on here says three hours and 40 minutes. So I'll see y'all back in a little less than four hours. You would not believe how incredible my house smells right now. It just smells like a straight up bakery. Um, this isn't quite yet done. It's got a few more minutes left on it. But meanwhile, I did want to mention something. Um, some of these ingredients. Um, some of them you can find locally. Some of them you can't. I know I've seen flaxseed meal in the stores. I think once or twice I've seen the vada wheat gluten, but it was really expensive to buy in the stores here. Um, oat fiber, I've not seen that. So what I do is I just get myself on Amazon. Um, you can buy pretty big bags of it for not that expensive. If you know you're going to be making a lot of bread, it's a really good investment to go ahead and make. All right, so this is almost done. I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll see what it looks like. All right, it's finally done. The moment of truth has arrived. I can't wait. Um, as I know, when this first gets done, you're going to want to let it cool off for a little bit. If you try to handle this pan, while it's still hot, you will burn yourself. I've done that. So it's been sitting here for an hour or two. And so it's safe to handle now to unlock it. You're just gonna twist it, unlock it, and pop it out. Something that I didn't know ahead of time. So the mixing paddle, right? That's in the bottom of this that needs the dough up for you. When it bakes, it'll stick into the bottom of the bread. This can make getting it out sometimes a little bit difficult. So what I do is I just flip it over and tap the edges of the pan against the counter. It'll release after just a few taps, no big deal. So let's go ahead and there it goes, popped out. Ah, the paddle stayed in the pan. Sometimes it'll stay stuck in the bread. If that happens, I just use a butter knife. I pop it out. Don't try and eat it, right? All right, guys, tell me that is not a beautiful loaf of bread. Look at that. And the way this particular bread maker does, it kind of makes it, I don't know if you can see, but more square on the sides and tall. And the best way I've personally found to cut this to our likings is I go from the top down initially. There you go. So we get two halves. How pretty is that? In that little hole at the bottom, that's just where the um, paddle was at. So when I pulled it out, it left a void there. Not a big deal. All right. A couple slices and see how it does. It's got really great texture. So the crust on this tends to be nice and firm. So it's not like flopping and going to fall apart on you. A couple of slices here so y'all can see how it looks all the way through. Now one thing I learned, do not slice this too thin. If it's sliced too thin, it does get a little bit floppy, so just don't try and get any many pieces out of it. All right, one, two, three, four, five. I think in the printout that I had, it says you can get like 18 slices out of this. Mm, hit or miss on that, I could probably get 16. You know, between 14 and 16 slices out of it, but that is absolutely gorgeous. All right, hopefully you guys found this video useful. If so, I welcome you to share with anyone that you think could also use a good recipe for some keto bread, low carb bread. Um, please like this video down below so that other people can find this video as well. And I will be putting out more content, so please subscribe to see what I make next. Thanks, have a great day, guys.